You're listening to Book, Line, and Sinker, a podcast from the Marble Falls Public Library staff. I'm Iona, your host. On this podcast, we discuss books, movies, media, and anything related to the public library. Today, we're going to be discussing Christmas movies. Enjoy! Welcome back, listeners. It's after Thanksgiving, which means it's time for holiday movies. We have a whole bunch in the library. Some of them are cheesy, some of them are classics. Either way, we rewatch them over and over again each holiday season. I have Misty with me today. Hello, hello. And we're going to discuss our favorite holiday movies. And we might even debate on what is the best holiday movie of all time. So first, I want to ask Misty what her family traditions are. What movies do they watch as a family each year? We watch as a family, and it's mostly my son and I, we watch The Sound of Music every year, which I just learned is probably not too much of a Christmas movie, (laughs) but we watch it every Christmas, and um, I love it. Never gets old. Another one is Jack Frost, uh, which happens to be one of my very favorites, and of course, I always have to throw in the old school Grinch. I like the animated. Yeah. Me. Not everybody in my family does, but I love it. Yeah, I like the animated over the live action, but... I haven't watched The New Grinch, so... I haven't either. I don't know how that's going to be. Yeah, Jack Frost, we were talking about this the other day, but it's kind of morbid. It is kind of morbid. But it's a kid's movie. I love it. Uh, I know when you sit down and you pick it apart and you look at what it's about, yeah, it's kind of not a cool movie. Explain the plot for our listeners who haven't seen Jack Frost. If you haven't seen Jack Frost, it stars one of my favorite. I really love Michael Keaton. I love Michael Keaton. Um, But it stars him or a snowman him. But what it is is it takes place, of course, during the holidays, and you have a young preteen boy who is just down and depressed for obvious reasons, his dad has died. And he feels like he missed out on a lot for obvious reasons. Um, But he is just sad, and his dad is watching him as a snowman. And he is sent back to bring his son out of the the dumps, per se, um, as a snowman. And it's really, it's heartwarming. For me, I love it. Everybody thinks I'm crazy, but I do. I think it's good because the moral is, is he ends up spending quality t- quality time with his dad that he's missed out on. But his dad's a snowman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it's cute. I It's a cute movie, but it's just, it's kind of sad. But my family's Christmas movie also has a kind of a little bit of death in it. Um, the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. I love it. Everyone in my family watches that movie. It's We're all obsessed with it. And basically, if you haven't seen The Santa Claus, it starts off with a boy. His parents are divorced, and he's spending Christmas with his dad. And they go and eat Christmas Eve dinner at the diner, and they come home, and Santa Claus falls off their roof and dies. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Tim Al- the character of Tim Allen has to become the Santa Claus. And they go to the North Pole, and he resists, resists it, and he doesn't think it's all real, but then he starts getting big, and he starts growing a white beard, mm. and the son is convinced that his dad is Santa Claus, and his mom and the new stepdad are like, no, you're crazy. You can't see your son. And basically, they end up believing that he's Santa Claus. But it's just a great movie. I love it. I love Tim Allen. I think he's one of he's the... He's hilarious in oh, it, too. <laughs> he's hilarious in it. He's hilarious in anything, but I, I just... Agree. I love him in the Santa Claus. I think it's it's definitely a classic. It's a newer classic, I guess, compared to, like, Miracle on 34th Street mm-hmm. and It's a Wonderful Life, but it's my family's classic movie. Moving on 
besides just family traditions, what are some of your favorite Christmas movies to watch? New or old? New World, of course, I love the Santa Claus. I love it. We do watch yeah. it and giggle. Um, we just discovered one here recently that I would love to share with everybody that I think is going to become a holiday tradition with my son and I. And I say my son and I, we love Christmas movies. My husband does not, but we do. And so we sat down the other night and watched one called The Christmas Chronicles, starring somebody else that people might be familiar with which is Kurt Russell, who plays Santa. Hilarious. Great meaning behind it, and it takes the concept of kids staying up late at night trying to catch Santa. Who is he? Where is he? (laughs) But it puts a modern twist on it. So you've got these kids nowadays (laughs) getting very crafty with trying to catch Santa. You've got the camcorder. You've got the phone. (laughs) You've got the booby traps with the laser going. I mean, they really got down. And Kurt Russell plays Santa, and it's hilarious. I encourage everybody to watch it. That's a Netflix original, isn't it? It is. Mm. It's very good. We plan on watching it again. It was really good. Netflix, there's been some really good Netflix original Christmas movies coming out. Some came out last year, but I feel like this year they've put out like even more. There's that what that there's a cheesy one that me and Misty have watched, the Christmas Switch or the Princess oh, The Princess Switch. The mm-hmm. Princess Switch. Um it has Vanessa Hutchins from High School Musical. Mm-hmm. And it's just a great cheesy, cute Christmas movie. And we love like. cheese. Yeah, it's some of the Netflix one are high on the cheesy level, but they're still cute. They feel good cheesy though. I have two modern Christmas movies that I absolutely adore. The first one is Four Christmases. It's with Reese Witherspoon and Vince Vaughn, and they want to go on a vacation for Christmas. And they don't like spending time with their family at Christmas. It's too crazy. Both of them have divorced parents. And they're at the airport getting ready to go on their flight. And it gets canceled. So their trip is canceled. But what happens is they get put on the news. And the reporter's like, how did this ruin your Christmas? Like, what are your plans? And then their family see them on the news. So they basically have to go to everyone's Christmas, <laughs> hence four Christmases. And just what happens in each one of their family's Christmas is just hilarious. I think it hits on some great points about split families and how that affects the holidays. And it's just so funny. Reese Witherspoon is amazing in everything she is, mm-hmm. but her and Vince Vaughn have a great chemistry. See, and I go, Vince Vaughn is amazing in everything <laughs> he's in, so I can see that. He, it, they were, they were fantastic. It's a classic. It's a modern classic, in my opinion. Um, I just absolutely love it. I can watch it. It's not kid friendly. There's some parts that <laughs> are not appropriate, <laughs> but me and my husband Clay watch that. Every year. You make me want to watch it, for sure. <laughs> I, I was just, oh, I crack up so hard. Another one that I love is, it's called The Holiday. It is another big budget Christmas film. It has Cameron Diaz, uh, Jude Law, Jack Black, and Kate Winslet. And that plot is Cameron Diaz's character and Kate Winslet. Cameron Diaz is like a, mo- a movie trailer producer, and she has a breakup, and she wants to get out. And Kate Winslet has just been pining over the sky for two years, her ex-boyfriend, and he gets engaged. So both of them just want an escape, and they end up swapping houses. One lives in a town outside of London, and one lives in L.A. And so they swap houses, swap lives for a bit, And then Jude Law and Jack Black come in, and they're kind of the uh, romance figure or comic relief. And then there's an old guy that Kate Winslet's character helps out. It's just, it's a really cute, beautiful movie. Have the tissues ready if you're sappy like I am, because I cried. And I will completely (laughs) admit it, I am that I've (laughs) talked about this for quite some time, and I thought, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, I cried. Yeah, it's... It's one of those you can watch on repeat, um, even so when good. it's not Christmas. But it is it is definitely a Christmas movie, which brings me to my point of what makes a Christmas movie. 
because when you look at the list, you'll see things like I've seen Die Hard come up in Christmas movie lists. Gremlins. I've seen Gremlins. Mm -hmm. Um, But to me, those aren't Christmas movies. So what do you think makes a movie can be considered a Christmas movie rather than just a movie that happens during Christmas time? Well, you know, we had this discussion yesterday, and we started pulling movies out of the air that could technically be considered Christmas movies because they take place during the holidays. That doesn't cut it for me when I'm defining a Christmas movie. For me personally, I think it has to have a happy ending. Yes, Jack Frost does have a happy (laughs) ending, and I will defend it, because the boy comes to peace, and he's okay in accepting his dad's death for me. So that's a happy ending, and they get to say goodbye. He loses his dad dad twice, though. I'm sorry, that movie is sad. But But for me, it has to have a happy ending, and um, as morbid as it may be, that is my happy (laughs) ending on that one. But I have to have some... I love good over evil. I love... Um, of course, I love the cheesy romance. That definitely helps it. But even like in Tim Allen as the Santa Claus, for me, that's a great one because he accepts it and brings cheer to everybody. I love it. Yeah, they like believe in Santa. Mm-hmm, they believe in mm-hmm. Santa. I like the happy endings. So for me, I think most of them do have a happy ending, but it's not necessarily about that. It's if they focus on Christmas yes. and if they are watched around Christmas time. So I'm going to make the case against Die Hard. I know some people think that's a Christmas movie, but I'm going to let you know that it came out in July. That did not come out at Christmas. It was not ever meant to be a Christmas movie. It just happens during Christmas, but it came out in July. It's not a Christmas movie. Argue me on that. <laughs> come talk to me. I will defend myself. But the movie needs to focus on Christmas. That needs to be the focal point. Uh, Or the holidays. It has to be about the holidays. I I agree. I can see that. Yeah. Which is why I sometimes forget that Home Alone is technically a Christmas movie. But to me, the focus isn't... Yes, they leave for the holidays and that's how he gets left. But that's not like the point of the movie. So I forget that it's a holiday mm-hmm. movie. And I don't know if I would consider it a Christmas movie. See, I do. See? I consider it a Christmas movie. And that is also one that we watch every year. And I think it's great. It's it's happy. They get together and they realize I own that. At the, end, <laughs> that the family is what's important. No, if you leave your kid on holiday and you forget about him, I don't care how many she kids you have. She has six kids. No, I don't care. I... I do not care. If you leave your kid, you are a bad parent and do not deserve to be celebrated in a Christmas <laughs> ma- family movie tradition. <laughs> I'm not judging, but I'm judging. <laughs> she has a house full of craziness, so <laughs> I'm defending. You judge, I'll defend. <laughs> but, I, but I do. Home Alone's fun. A movie I want to talk about is A Christmas Story or The Christmas Story because the only reason why is because that movie is played on every channel pretty much 24-7 from December 1st to December 25th. It literally is played 24 hours on Christmas. I think it's on TBS. Mm-hmm. Is that where they usually it's play on it? TBS. And that is one of the most popular Christmas movie traditions. But I have some issues with it. So, issue number one. They're so mean to the mom. She they just... are mean to the mom, but in <laughs> honesty, that can be reality for some people. <laughs> some they do. It really can. Um, the What I love about that movie, though, is she gets redemption at the end because he shoots his yeah. eye out. <laughs> she warned him. <laughs> and it's like, dude, you deserved it. Your mom told you that you were going to shoot your eye out, like, literally every ten minutes of that movie. And then he shoots his eye and it's just fantastic. I love that moment. I mean, that's kind of mean, but I just love that moment because his mom is was that, right. Would you say that's your favorite moment of the movie? That is my favorite moment and the feet, the bunny feety pajamas. See, when he mine has to wear those. of that movie, and I, I like the movie, okay? It's not <laughs> one of my ultimate favorites, but I like it because I giggle all the time <laughs> watching it. Oh, no, I definitely <laughs> laugh. But my favorite part of that whole movie is the tongue on the flagpole. Mm. <laughs> Did did you ever try it after seeing the movie? No, but I've, like, had my tongue, like, stuck on a piece of ice and freaked out. So, you know. I just, that moment is so funny I tried to get my brother to do it, but he wouldn't. (laughs) Tried. 
Yeah, so that movie is very, it's infamous. I mean, it's just got so much notoriety. You've got the leg lamp. You've got the you'll shoot your eye out. You have the tongue on on the flagpole. The feety pajamas. The Red Rider BB gun. Yeah, I was, the Red Rider BB gun. I actually knew someone um, when I lived in Corpus. They lived in a small town, but they had like an anniversary edition Red Rider BB gun. That's like, hilarious. That. It's, it Somebody, was, and they get serious about that movie, but it would be interesting to me to see how many kids nowadays have never seen the movie, but know a comment or something, a scene from the movie. Yeah, those, re- the references from that movie are pretty much embedded <laughs> in our culture. <laughs> they are, the w- Whether people realize it or not. I mean, I've gone to stores around Christmas and I see that leg lamp. Mm-hmm. Like, that actually exists, like, because of the movie. And it should not have existed in the movie. <laughs> Stick with the fishnet talking. <laughs> and now it's like, people legit buy that because of that movie. And I, I think that's interesting and hilarious and makes me want to cry all, the, all at the same time. But that movie is a classic, uh, whether you like it or not. It's one of the classics. Um, so what are some... Cl- movies that you consider just classics that everyone should watch you know that's a tough one and i was thinking about that when you gave me the questions for to ponder and think about (laughs) one of the movies that i think everyone should watch and i'm going to not know the name right off the top of my head but it's the the one with jim carrey um where he's Visited by the Ghost of Christmas Past. Christmas Carol. Yeah, Christmas Carol. I was going to say Christmas Story. It's stuck <laughs> in my head. But a Christmas Carol. I like that movie. I like that version. And if you would have asked me before I saw that movie what my opinion was going to be, I would have told you I was going to hate it because the animations are creepy. They're creepy. They're, um, but I like it for some reason. And I think that that's a good one because it taught. The story is a timeless story. You're visited by the ghost of Christmas past. And it takes you to times in your life. And it, at the end, it's the happy ending that I look for. That's one for me. The same story, different version is a classic for me, is the Mickey Mouse Christmas Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I think that one is the best version of the Christmas Carol. That's a classic for me. I think... That's if you're gonna watch one Disney or like Mickey Mouse Christmas, mm-hmm. that's the one that I would watch. It's excellent. Another classic for me, even though it's probably the most m- recent or modern classic, is Elf. If you haven't seen Elf, you're missing out <laughs> you're on missing like out big time. so many quotes that people say. I I quote Elf like at least ten times a year. I just think that is the greatest new classic movie. Um, Another one, another classic that I really love is It's a Wonderful Life. My mom loves that movie. Um, I think it has a really good moral. It's fun. They've, it used to be black and white, which made kids kind of not want to watch it, but they've redone it in color. And I think it's just a great story. Mm, I, yeah, it is a good one. Another one for me that I know I'm probably <laughs> going to get hated on, so hate on me. <laughs> I love A Christmas Vacation. I love the original. I do with Clark Griswold. I grew up with a Clark Griswold in my life, so it's very easy for me to relate to that movie. And um, I love it. It's hilarious. There's just, there's so many classics. I mean, you can Google the top 50 classic movies and you'll just go through and be like, oh, I forgot. I love that movie. Um, These are just our personal favorites. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, you can, you have, Chris, there's so many Christmas movies that you can just check them out or stream them and you have enough to Hallmark watch through. Channel them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have enough to watch through Christmas. There was a new cute one that I really liked too. I loved the holiday calendar. I loved that singing cheesy one. <laughs> That's that was Netflix. adorable. And another new movie, uh, I do love the Netflix one, but this is another kind of big budget one is uh, The Man Who Saved Christmas. I've never seen that one. So it's with the actor that plays Matthew Crowley on Downton Abbey. I can never remember his name, but I remember his character of Matthew Crowley. Um, But he plays Charles Dickens. And I think, and not a lot of people know this, but Charles Dickens is really responsible for our modern 
Christmas. I do not think Christmas would be like what it is in America without Charles Dickens, his writings and his stories. So the man who saved Christmas, it came out last year, last Christmas. Uh, it's a really great story about Charles Dickens and kind of shows how influential he was on what we know as Christmas mm-hmm. today. Um, but it's a new movie, so it's, it's fun to watch. I want to end the podcast talking about the best Christmas movie. What is the greatest Christmas movie of all time that everyone already watches or will watch? It's just the greatest, in your opinion. That has it all for the entire family to enjoy. Great meaning, happy ending. I th- I still I love I love Santa Claus with Tim Allen. I love it. I think that it's great for everybody. Happy ending, tr- great meaning behind it. I mean, he fought being Santa tooth and nail, <laughs> and no, he I love it. Yeah, so I would have said four Christmases, but I really thought about. It. I was like, no, if it's going to be the best Christmas movie, the whole family has to be able to watch it. Um, I just love Four Christmases because I I think it really speaks to what a lot of kids, even as adults, go through. I'm an adult, but a child of divorce, so I kind of have to deal with that tension of splitting holidays, Um, but it's not as family-friendly. So I changed my mind and thought about it, and I say the Santa Claus, too, um, because I just... Tim Allen's performance is fantastic. You get to see the North Pole and all the elves. If you can watch the scene where they're getting, like, hot chocolate Mm -hmm. and just resist a cup of hot chocolate, I just don't trust you. Because that movie, I mean, it makes you feel, it makes you want what they have. I mean, I wanted to go to a diner on Christmas Eve because they went to a diner (laughs) on Christmas Eve. I, I just think that movie is fantastic. See, mine was a toss-up. I almost said Polar Express because everybody can watch it, and I love it. It is a great meaning, great story, great graphics. Another one that could creep you out with the graphics. Yeah, it it just depends on kind of what animation you like. Mm -hmm, The animation is (laughs) amazing. I also, I know this is newer, but Elf is really great. I think it's something... I honestly think it could be one of the best Christmas movies of all time. I think it's going to hold up well. And I know both of these are new compared to the old classics, but I don't, I think we get a lot of new, really good Christmas movies and not everything has to be old. Even though I love the, the old ones, Miracle on 34th street, Mm -hmm. the original, um, or the newer one that's with, uh, I just say it's with Matilda because I, that's all I know that's, the actor, <laughs> the actress from. But I just I think some of these modern ones are going to really stand up, like Elf in the Santa Claus. So we're going to say that the Santa Claus is the best Christmas movie of all time. Yes. If you disagree, comment on our podcast page and let us know what your favorite Christmas movies are, and we'll feature them in the next podcast. Um, Before we go, I want to plug in a Christmas event that's coming up for kids that has to do with the Polar Express, kind of. So I'm going to let Missy talk about a children's Christmas event. Yes, coming up, we will have the Polar Express Peppermint Pajamas and the Polar Express event here at the library. And we always have a special visitor, but it's a great time for kids of all ages even adults come just to bring joy. Uh, We sit around and we sing Christmas carols. Um, We sing just until our little hearts can't take it anymore. And then I read the Polar Express. And then shortly after, we have a fun visitor. I bet you can't guess who it is. (laughs) Super excited for our special guest. And can kids wear their pajamas? They can wear their pajamas. They can, they don't, it's not a requirement. Um, but they can, and believe it or not, the majority of them did the past couple of years. Do we get hot chocolate? Of course. <laughs> 
All right, so it's December 20th, right? Is it? Okay. <laughs> it's December the 20th, yes. If we're wrong, just go to our website and check our calendar, <laughs> and it'll be on there. Come to that event. We have our Christmas concert coming up next Friday, December 7th. Uh, refreshments are served at 3 p.m., and the concert starts at 4. So bring your family out to that. We're excited to see you at the library. Um, if you can't make it to those events, just come to the library. Check out some great Christmas movies. We have them all. They might be on a waiting list, but we have a ton of movies for you to check out and watch with your family this Christmas. All right, so Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.